Good morning, everyone. So our topic for today is all about the inventory management. Okay. So last time we discussed uh, what are the importance of inventory. No last uh, topic discussion. And uh, inventory, of course, is uh, very essential for uh, proper ordering of stocks, prevention of losses, no? uh, increasing or decreasing the uh, food cost percentage and increasing sales. So with proper inventory management, we're able to achieve that. Okay. Okay, now let's proceed to restaurant inventory management. Okay, so when we say inventory, it's about the hardwiring of your restaurant. And uh, your food inventory plan keeps everything in place, organized and connected. And one tiny oversight can result in drastic change for your business. So again, uh, inventory is very important to restaurant business because it because it keeps everything in the right level. It also improves our profitability, our efficiency in terms of acquiring resources, and efficiency in, in terms of our operations. You know? So with the proper inventory, we're able to see or really track the sales, uh, where it is going, and uh, we are also able to assess what are the uh, solutions for those products that are uh, not saleable. No, or we can think of a marketing strategies in order to uh, promote those products that are not uh, into uh, consumption for the customers. And also, we are able to know what are the products that are best selling and uh, what are those uh, uh, strategies in order to sustain those uh, demands for those products. Okay, so... Restaurant inventory is a loss prevention tool and a measure of profitability for your business. So inventory is what supplies are coming into our restaurant, what goes out of our kitchen, and what's left in our kitchen. Okay. So uh, of course we have uh, those uh, initial inventory or initial stocks in our kitchen, and then we also have those materials or raw materials that are being sold or that goes out of our kitchen, and then. How many materials are left you know, uh, at the end of the day? Okay. So what are the areas of losses? So where those inventory loss came from? So of course, first, positive no, no from the sold items. So if the inventory loss is from those items that are sold, so it's a good indicator that our products are being sold and are, we are doing our uh, job or task in a excellent manner, in an excellent manner. So when we have inventory losses from spillage, you no know, employee mistakes and complaints, you no know, and remedying customer complaints. So it means that we need to really uh, look for solutions of uh, from this emerging problems. You no, know, we need to train our staff well, you no, know, we need to uh, avoid spillage, you no know, uh, by means of uh, having a uh, Right, uh, competitions, no, for our menu costing, no, and uh, right portioning, no, when when it comes to our preparation of food, no, and of course, uh, right, uh, production of food, no, as it is being cooked in the kitchen, and then mistakes, no, of course, we need to train our staff no, in order to eliminate those those mistakes and complaints, no, to prevent complaints. If the staff are trained, well trained. If the if the all the staff, no, not only for the kitchen staff as well as the dining staff, no, are very trained, no, we can avoid this inventory loss coming from customer complaints. Because if we have customer complaints, no, the food that are being uh are subject to complaint are also be become free or become waste, no. So we cannot do anything about it. It will goes into waste. No, and another one, if we have free of charge items, so those items are uh, being paid by the company, not by the customers because it's for the uh, complaints. Okay, And then staff meals, so this one is positive. No, Some of the establishments or majority of the food service establishments are giving free meals no, to their staff. No, And uh, this is computed under staff meals. Okay, and then theft. No? So this one, so we need to, the management team should be vigilant no? and uh, 
uh, looking for the uh, how the costume or how their uh, um, uh, staff are doing, especially in the kitchen. So they, they need to make sure that all their staffs are are doing their job uh, in a right way and are not committing any kind or any form of theft. Okay. So also in inventory management, it, it, it is important to uh, consider you know, or to really have uh, to make sure that we are on the proper range of uh, food cost percentage, which is from 25 to 40%. So how are we going to compute you know, for the food cost percentage? First, we need to uh, divide the cost of food sold over the amount of sales. Okay, so for the competition, for the food cost percentage, so let's have here an example. Okay, so for the beginning inventory, purchases, invent ending inventory, and uh, the food sales. So in order to get the cost of food sold, we need to add the beginning inventory to the purchases and then subtract it to the ending inventory. Okay, so for example, in this no? So we have 25,000 pesos as our uh, beginning inventory. So we need to add this to the purchases, which is amounting to, uh, to 14,000 pesos. And then 25,000 plus 14,000 pesos. So we will have 39,000 pesos. And then we need 1,000 pesos. So the difference will be the 9,000 pesos here. No? So as we get the cost of goods sold, which is the 9,000 pesos, we will divide that into our food sales, which is amounting to it. So in 26,000 pesos uh, divided by, or 9,000 pesos divided by 26,000 pesos is equivalent to 0.34, Then multiply that to 100 to get percentage. And then we have 34.61%. Or 34.62%, so it should be round off into two decimal places. So we have here one, so we need to round up. So 34.62% is the food cost percentage for this example. So meaning to say, you now from the range of 25 to 40%, so we are in the 34.61% or 62%. So it's uh, within the range. So meaning to say, uh, you are doing well you know, in your operations. So if uh, the percentage uh, exceeds into 40%, so you need to review all of the procedures, the uh, methods you are doing in your establishment. Okay? So now let's have the inventory part. Okay, so when we say inventory part, uh, this is also one way of inventory tracking you know, for your establishment. The normal part is the amount you expect to have in-house on a given day. So parts can and do change on factors like seasonality, day of the week, weather, parties, events, and more. So par is the minimum supply required in store after each food inventory delivery. So uh, restaurants are also setting their inventory bars no, or par inventory. Okay, so that they know, you know from that uh, par, they will base. Uh, how many products to order or how many products to add, you know? especially when there are uh, events you know, or other emerg emergency uh, situations that you need to add up your stocks. Okay. Next. For example, you know, if your frozen food supplier drops French fries off uh, every Tuesday, your set par level for fries should be your normal weekly usage of fries plus a little extra in case of emergencies, village based or big orders. So if you go through 200 fries per week and you like a safety net of 10%, you would always want enough fries in inventory that you would need. So let's have here the example of competition. So for an instance, you have a 20 bags, no? 20 bags of fries as your NID or normal inventory depletion. So you want to add 10% no? of, for your safety net. So let's see for a single bag, it is uh, having or comp composing 10 uh, orders of uh, fries. So that's why on our example, it is the NID unit of uh, bags as bag here. No? So uh, we convert it into 20. Because uh, like what I have said, 20 or one package is equals to 10 servings of rice. 
Okay, so for the computation for level is equals or formula is equals to normal inventory depletion plus safety net, okay? And then times the normal inventory depletion. So the par level is 20, normal inventory depletion, which is 20 as well. And then we get the 10% uh, no, of the uh, 20, okay? Which is uh, 2, okay? So we have 2. So 2 plus 20 is equals to 22. So meaning the par level of price should be 22 because we add 10% of the from the NID or the normal inventory depletion. So again, 10% of 20 is 2. So we just add it to the normal inventory depletion. That's why we derive or we come up with the 22 bags as per level of price. Okay, so another example, no? So your amount is uh, what you need to restock and need for no? The par level of chicken should be 80, and you have the amount in store is uh, which is 20, meaning you have remaining 20 in your store. No, from the events and emergencies. Let's say, for example, you have five here, no, as your additional for your events. So, how are you going to compute for the order amount? So, you will just subtract your par level to the amount in store because amount in store is already available. So, you do not need to add this to your order amount because if you do so, you will have spillage or uh, spoilage. Okay, and then uh, since you have your events part. So we will divide, uh, sorry, add the events part to the par level. So as we get the uh, difference between par level and the amount in store, which is, so our order amount is 6. Okay. So next. So here are some terminologies that are essential for inventory management. So we have the seating inventory, which is the amount of crowd greenhouse. We have the depletion, which is, which is the amount of product used in a set period of time. And then the usage, which is the amount of seating inventory divided by the average depletion in a set period. Okay, so for example, our seating inventory is four gallons, you know, and then you plan to use one gallon a week. And then the usage will be four weeks. So meaning to say you can use your four gallons within four weeks because the average depletion is one per week. So you will just have or divide your seating inventory, which is four, to the average depletion, which is one, so you will have four weeks you know, for your safety. Okay, so now let's compute for the variance. So, what is variance? First of all, the variance is the difference between your product cost. Product cost here is from the POS, and the usage amount cost is from your inventory. Okay, so let's say, for example, you have $100 worth of chicken at the end of the day, 25 worth of chicken. Okay, so meaning you have negative five variance. So meaning five dollars worth of chicken is unaccounted for. Okay, so you need to overcheck or to uh, double check. You know what is happening or what was happened? Why you have this five or negative five percent? No, so maybe there's an error with uh, concerning your staff and how they do their uh, jobs here. No, or Maybe some of the items reflect on the POS that those products are sold, you know, and then the items are uh, derived out from the kitchen. You know? So that's why from the kitchen or the usage amount cost is 100. So there is a variance. So there is a difference you know, between the product cost and the usage amount. So you know, if it's the variance is positive, it's not good. You know? Because uh, some situations... The reason why you have a positive variance because is it because you did not punch the right uh, products on the POS. You know? So when, when that happens, you are able to have positive or uh, overages, which is also not good because the right uh, products are not accounted you know? and the wrong products are being out. You know? So it's not good, even it's positive variance. Okay, so how are we going to get the percentage of the variance? So it's easy, no? It's just we are going to divide the variance amount to the usage amount cost. So in this example, negative $5 divided by $100. So the usage amount cost is negative 5% variance. Okay, so the variance percentage is, the, is negative 5%. Okay. So how are we going to do a restaurant inventory? It can be automated or with the use of POS and inventory management software. 
the pros is the is that it is it also have the ability to give the most accurate of property of tracking inventory and the cons is not all uh POS platforms has its inventory management software. Okay, so you really need to look for POS that integrates inventory management software systems. Okay. So of course the technology enables enable us to handle a large amount of data you know, and accurate data. So it's very essential to have uh, this software. But we need to be cautious of the points or the uh, disadvantage. Next is par inventory sheet. So we can use par inventory sheet as a tool to manage inventory by uh, food type or food suppliers. When it comes to the time for their next inventory orders, managers use their restaurant cars inventory sheet to guide what and how much they should be ordering based on their seating inventory and how fast previous inventory move through the restaurant and any upcoming events they think they call for additional inventory. So for example, by using uh, par inventory sheet, sheets according to par by food type. So we have food item here, for example, tomatoes, uh, which uh, can produce 50 orders, lettuce, 30 uh, heads per order, onions, 80 per order, and carrots is 20 per order. If, for example, our par level should be 24 tomatoes, lettuce is 60, Onions is 5 and then cards is 10. Okay, so we need to subtract the amount in store, which is 5 for the tomatoes, six, uh, 12 for the, uh, from the 60 bar level for onions, and then 3 for the carrots. So we do not have events bar here. We do not have emergency bar here. So we will just subtract. But if we have events bar and then emergency bar, we need to add. Okay. So in this example, which is subtract minus 5 is 15. 60 minus 12 is 48, 5 minus 1 is 4, and 10 minus 3 is... This one is with the help of our R event. Okay, so how are we going to manage our inventory? So we need to train our staff, track our sales, no, and keep extra supply of our inventory. So it's really important to train our staff well so that they can perform their jobs well. No, especially when it comes to ordering, inventory management, no? production of food, servicing of guests, tracking of sales with the use of our inventory sheets or POS systems with inventory management software. And then, of course, we need to really have a safety net no? for emergency or events bar. So this is how are we going to manage our inventory in our restaurant. Okay, so now let's proceed to hotel inventory management. So for the hotel, uh, inventory management for hotels involves revenue management, which is about creating and managing demand, and yield management, which is about maximizing the returns. You know? So, of course, we need to have marketing strategies in order to maximize our profits or returns. They are to be profitable in hotel business. So, there are three factors to consider the pricing, distribution, and market segmentation. So, let's uh, have the pricing. So, Pricing of hotels depends on the uh, days within the week. You no, know? during the peak seasons, uh, of course, the hotel rooms will have will be will have their marketing strategies. During high seasons, they also need to increase prices so as to compensate those costs during the low seasons. Through this dynamic pricing, businesses can provide discounts and incentives in controlled way during uh different seasons, okay? So it varies, no? When it comes to hotel pricing, it varies to the needs or the days of the week or the seasons, seasonality, okay? So we need to uh, really uh, look our decisions in terms of pricing on the situations, no? Or the uh, seasons, no? In order to have or to maximize our profits. Okay, next is distribution. So for hotel, generally advertise your rooms through multiple channels, such as uh, online travel agencies to optimize reach and promote sales, distribution management, and um, also, it, uh, this is also about calculating the minimum number of rooms needed to be sold for any given period by each channel. So with uh, the online travel agencies, now we are able to optimize our sales and to know what are those rooms that are needed to be marked to, are needed to market 
no? and what are the rooms that are uh, in demand. Okay, so those online travel agencies have their platforms that we are able to see those uh, computations no, automatically. So in doing so, you then have the ability to make informed choices regarding reallocation from cancellations or where to list spare rooms to maximize the sales. Okay, next one is market segmentation. By being aware of your market and the variable preferences, demands and affordability of different demographics are paramount to understanding how to price and distribute your room sales across those various channels. So the demands now are very dynamic. It's not only about affordability, but also some of the reasons, no, their uh, buying capacity no, also needs to uh, be considered in market segmentation. Okay, so uh, with the proper know-how of our market, we are able to uh, give right prices to each room, you no, know, and we are able to give the services that the customers are um, are uh, requesting from us or deserves. Okay, the customer deserves. You no, know, so we are also uh, become profitable and sustainable with uh, proper know-how of our markets. Okay, so for the room inventory, so it's uh, very essential to know the number of rooms that are occupied and the number of rooms that are available in a hotel or the total number of rooms so as to derive from the occupancy rate. Okay, so we need to know the set number of rooms in a single hotel and a percentage of available rooms or beds being sold for a certain period of time. So for example, in order to get the occupancy rate, we need to have the room sold, for example, is 50, and the rooms available is also 50. So our occupancy rate is equivalent to 50. So meaning 50 is the 50% of 100 from the total number of rooms. So as it is occupied, so we have also 50% occupancy. Okay, so that's how we compute you know, for restaurant, uh, for hotel uh, inventory. Okay, so we need to know the occupancy rate so that we have a guide you know, on how to sell those rooms that are not occupied and what strategies are uh, essential you know, for uh, for the rooms to be, all the rooms to be sold you know, and what strategies and uh, marketing strategies or policies you know, that this hotel should have. Okay. Again, uh, hotel, uh, the rooms are for the hotel are sold to this different distribution channels. No, we have online distribution channels. No, and of course, the traditional marketing methods, uh, 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 uh giving of flyers, no, and uh, seminars or so sponsorships. No, so those those are some of the ways on how to um make our uh, hotel. Uh, known or to the hotel to have uh, its uh, number of guests you know, for all the rooms to be occupied. Okay, so that's it for our topic, inventory management. So I hope you learned something from this topic. And uh, I see you guys uh, soon. Thank you so much and stay safe, everyone.